Uh, Alexis, the market's uh, under a bit of pressure here today after uh, Jerome Powell's speech this morning, uh, ruling out negative interest rates. I don't think the market really liked hearing that one. Also, uh, Brian, market didn't like to hear that uh, Fed Chairman Powell does not believe we're going to get this snap back, this V-shaped recovery that many on Wall Street were hoping for. Um, we know our Fed correspondent, Brian Chung, was uh, listening in closely to what uh, Fed Chair Powell had to say. Uh, Brian, what was, what was your big takeaway from the speech this morning? Good morning, Alexis. It was exactly that, that the Federal Reserve uh, top dog, which is really Jay Powell at the top there, saying that he doesn't necessarily expect the U.S. economy to snap back as quickly as maybe uh, other Fed officials had hoped at the beginning of this COVID-19 crisis. He did lay out some projections for unemployment, which uh, he really declined to do in previous public appearances. And he also offered a large scale view of what he could see this recovery looking like. Here's what he had to say this morning at the Peterson Institute. Over the course of the next month or so, unemployment will peak. And then as we return to more normal levels of, act, of economic activity, it's a reasonable expectation that unemployment will start to decline again. And it may decline sharply, but it's also likely to remain well above the levels that we saw earlier this year and all through uh, 2019 and 18, uh, which were 50 year lows in unemployment. So uh, it'll take some time to get back to where we were. Uh, I have every reason to think we can get back there. The economy should substantially recover uh, once the virus is under control. And as you can hear there from Jay Powell, he was saying that, uh, you know, yes, the economy can come back, but it might take a little bit of time and that the unemployment won't necessarily snap back immediately, uh, although he does see it peaking relatively soon in the next month. The uh, month of May is assumed what he means there. He did speak broadly in his prepared remarks about the issues that face the U.S. economy from a longer term scale, saying things like productivity could be severely damaged if indeed thousands of small to medium sized businesses close across the country, if people remain sidelined after being laid off for an extended period of time, and if business investment doesn't snap back immediately. These are all things that could hurt productivity, which paints a relatively bleak picture about the recovery. But he said, the Fed is doing everything that it can, that it can using its tools, and it wants fiscal policymakers to do the same. Anything else stick out to you in particular? Um, I mean, I know he talked about negative interest rates more at length during the Q&A, and, and he basically said, you know, we don't believe they're very effective. Um, we've seen other parts of the world go negative with their rates. Uh, what's your feeling on what Powell had to say and the market reaction to it? Well, for its worth, it was kind of interesting to see that Jay Powell actually had like a small giggle when Adam Posen from the Peterson Institute uh, started asking that question. A lot of that is because probably uh, it's a timely topic. You had uh, President Donald Trump just yesterday tweeting at the Fed, which seemed like the first tweet about the Fed in quite a while, saying that he would like the uh, the Fed to have negative interest rates like Japan and the, and the European Central Bank do. But Powell saying pretty clearly today that not only does he not consider it right now, the whole committee never considered it, and the committee's never considered it since the end of last year. So uh, Chairman Powell really kind of putting the nail in the coffin there by saying that last year the committee judged that it wasn't appropriate to be taking interest rates negative here in the United States, and that uh, the committee's stance on that really hasn't changed since that point in time. So, uh, you know, Jay Powell really saying that the toolbox that he wants to use does not include negative interest rate policies. It's really going to be forward guidance and quantitative easing, which, again, is that capitalist pace of asset purchases that the Fed began uh, when the COVID-19 crisis really took full form. One uh, small thing, Brian, that, that caught my attention, not hearing a lot of people talk about yet, uh, he briefly, Powell briefly discussed bankruptcies. Uh, I'm starting to hear this a lot more in discussions uh, with sources that I have, but how worried do you think the Fed is worried about rising bankruptcies in the U.S.? Well, the Fed is absolutely worried about it. That's the reason why they have the primary market corporate credit facility and the secondary market corporate credit facility uh, in the works. They actually just got that secondary market corporate credit facility live yesterday, which will already be buying corporate bond ETFs to try to make sure that these businesses can get funding. Now, uh, on one hand, you have the concern that, yes, uh, yeah, the Fed's doing this, but it actually might be providing a lifeline to these zombie companies that really were in danger before COVID-19 began in the first place. But on the other hand, you say, well, the Federal Reserve can't risk a wave of bankruptcies, which could turn 
this liquidity crisis, which it began as in March, into a solvency crisis. And that was the exact language that Powell used, turning it from liquidity into insolvency. The Fed wants to make sure it does whatever it can to not have that be the case. Now, when we talk about broadly what this means for the economy, I think Powell was careful not to say this is all about you know these corporations and whatnot. He wanted to kind of bring it back to the Main Street view by saying this is really translating into massive job losses, as we saw more than 20 million people lose their jobs in the jobs report that we saw last Friday. Uh, an interesting statistic that's going to be worth watching, about 40 percent of people in households making less than $40,000 a year were laid off just in March, which means that April is likely worse. And the Fed says that it'll have more granular data on that tomorrow. Uh, but the Fed really trying to say, yes, we're trying to do what we can on the liquidity front, but this does translate into how people are employed on Main Street. All right, Brian Chung, we'll leave it there. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.